Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing the rise and fall of Gongsun Zan lore series with episode 3, titled A Conflict Deepens. Now last time we discussed how Liu Yu's arrival as the governor of the Yo province brought peace to the borders. But at the same time, this peace also stopped Gongsun Zan's ascension up the political ladder, for without wars, generals just do not have the opportunity to shine. And there was nothing Gongsun Zan could do about it, because Liu Yu was seemingly untouchable. Not only was he respected by the nomadic tribes, he was also a skilled administrator as well. The Yu province was notorious for being a poor province to begin with, and throughout the Han dynasty, it had always relied on supplemental tax incomes from its two wealthier neighbors in the Ji and Qing provinces to support its finances. But ever since the Yellow Turban Rebellion, these two provinces also started to have their own financial trouble, compounding that with the unsafe road conditions with the rise in banditry and rebellions, the supplement financial support completely stopped, which effectively bankrupted the Yo province. But with Liu Yu's return, policies were now put in place to reduce tax burdens on citizens so that they can expand their farms, which in turn brings in more tax revenues. Refugees from the nearby Qing and Xu provinces were given free land to expand the population and thus the taxable base. Markets in Shanggu were opened once again to foreign traders as taxes from trade flourished once again with peace on the borders. And additional investment into the salt and iron mines at Yuyang also bolstered income. At the same time, Liu Yu led by example to reduce waste and excess spending amongst the gentry clans, as it was recorded that he often wore old robes that were patched repeatedly instead of buying new ones, and his meals consisted of at most one meat dish, despite his position as the governor. And with the governor leading the way, many lower-level officials and local gentry clans also soon followed as excessive spending waned over time. But the good time were short-lived, as with Emperor Liu Hong's sudden death in 189 and Dong Zhuo's subsequent takeover of the court, the country once again entered a period of uncertainty. Now, being in the north did have its benefits, as they were largely unaffected by the affairs in the capital. And with Dong Zhuo freshly in place as the regent to the new emperor Liu Xie, a new round of promotion would be handed out to everyone as Dong Zhuo wanted to buy everyone's loyalty to his new regime. Liu Yu would be named as Da Sima, which ranked even higher than his original Grand Excellency level position, while his Marquise title also got a slight upgrade to Xiangfen Hou. More importantly, in an effort to gain more supporters, Dong Zhuo even gave Gong Sun Zan a promotion, as he was finally made into a general with the title of Fen Wu, which means to promote the martial ways, and was even given the Marquis title as Ji Hou, as Dong Zhuo was handing out titles like candy in his early days as a regent. Regardless, Gong Sun Zan was delighted by his promotion, as neither he or Liu Yu took part in the coalition against Dong Zhuo, as neither thought it was their place to interfere, as their main duty was to keep the Yu province and the Han border safe. Now at one point, Dong Zhuo did try to summon Liu Yu back to the capital by tempting him with the title of Grand Tutor, as he would then become the young Emperor Liu Xie's teacher. But thankfully, due to difficult road conditions, the edict never made it to Liu Yu, as he would never learn of this assignment. But just because Liu Yu and Gong Sun Zan were far away from the affairs in the capital and chose to stay out of the fray, it did not mean the fray did not come to them, as in 191, Yuan Shao, the leader of the coalition against Dong Zhuo, tried to reach out to Liu Yu, pleading with him to take the throne, as the coalition was ready to support him in place of the young puppet Emperor Liu Xie. As with Liu Yu's support, the coalition would gain farther legitimacy. However, Liu Yu refused, as he did not want to become a traitor to his own clan, as being declared emperor by the coalition would cast him as a usurper, no matter the result of the conflict. If the coalition won, then he would go down in history as the emperor who usurped the throne from the main line of the imperial clan. 
And worse, if the coalition lost, then he would go down in history as a traitor to the imperial clan, as his name and line would get erased from history. Not only that, even if the coalition wins, how can Liu Yu ensure that he would actually end up on the throne as his own military influence as the governor of the Yu province was rather limited? If he was already having trouble controlling his own general Gong Sun Zan, then how can he be certain that he can control all the ambitious warlords that made up the coalition, who each had their own agenda in this war against Dong Zhuo? So Liu Yu turned down Yuan Shao's offer, and when Yuan Shao tried to compromise and suggest that Liu Yu simply join the coalition as an official of this new court that they were forming, Liu Yu would turn them down again as Liu Yu would decide to remain neutral in this entire affair until his son got involved. Now Liu Yu's son, Liu He, had been an official at court when Liu Yu first took the governor position in the Yu province. So when Dong Zhuo took over and swapped emperors before fleeing to Chang'an, Liu He had been in court the whole time as he would eventually become attendant to the young emperor Liu Xie who knew he was being held hostage by Dong Zhuo. So once at Chang'an, with Dong Zhuo still lagging behind in Luoyang, busy pillaging the city before the great fire that would burn down the rest, an opening presented itself as Liu Xie asked Liu He to escape Chang'an and try to make contact with his father, hoping that Liu Yu would rally the northern troops to come to rescue him in Chang'an. So Liu He snuck out of Chang'an, but with the route to the north filled with Dong Zhuo's troops, he had to loop around through Nanyang, which was being occupied by Yuan Shu at the time. Believing that Yuan Shu, who was part of the coalition, would help him, Liu He naively met with Yuan Shu, explaining the emperor's request. But instead of helping Liu He continue on his journey to see his father Liu Yu in the north, Yuan Shu placed Liu He under house arrest, as he would send one of his own messengers to Liu Yu with a slightly different demand. Yuan Shu's message to Liu Yu would be a rather simple one. The emperor sent your son asking you to help, but now I have your son. So if you want to see your son again, come south with your troops and join my army, and together we'll rescue the emperor. So essentially, Yuan Shu tried to blackmail Liu Yu into handing over his troops. And when this messenger reached Liu Yu, Liu Yu decided that his son's life was worth more than a few thousand cavalry, as he would order a unit numbering roughly 2,000 and send them south to Yuan Shu, hoping that Yuan Shu would be satisfied and release his son. And in theory, this unit would be used against Dong Zhuo to rescue the emperor, so there was nothing morally wrong for Liu Yu to do this. However, when this decision was being made, Gong Sun Zan tried to stop Liu Yu. As while Liu Yu didn't care about a unit of 2,000 cavalry, Gong Sun Zan cared a lot as those were his troops that Liu Yu was giving away to Yuan Shu. But being his boss, Liu Yu would overrule Gong Sun Zan as the units would leave to join Yuan Shu. This obviously infuriated Gong Sun Zan, who then decided to send his own cousin, Gong Sun Yue, along with additional cavalry unit numbering 1,000 strong to Yuan Shu as well, as he now feared that his earlier attempt in stopping Liu Yu from sending Yuan Shu troops might upset Yuan Shu, which could hurt him in the long run as the Yuan clan had tremendous political sway at court. So as a sign of goodwill, Kung Sun Zan hoped that his cousin, along with additional troops, could win him an ally in Yuan Shu. On top of that, Gong Sun Zan also suggested to Yuan Shu to not only keep Liu Yu's troops for himself, but also continue to hold Liu Yu's son Liu He just out of spite. But luckily, Liu He would manage to escape himself. But unfortunately, on his escape north, he would be captured again, this time by Yuan Shao. And with that, our episode comes to an end, as we'll continue next time to discuss how Yuan Shao and Yuan Shu's conflict will spill over to Gong Sun Zan and Liu Yu in the north and present Gong Sun Zan with a golden opportunity to finally elevate himself over Liu Yu. 
So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.